How do you feel about light pollution? You know, the inappropriate use of artificial light at night that robs us of our view of the night sky and the stars. Areas that were once full with the natural beauty and peace of actual nighttime now glow in the eternal false daylight. If you are an amateur astronomer or astrophotographer like me, it's likely a real sore spot for you and it seems to get to you more and more each passing year. You feel anger and frustration as offensively bright, wasteful fixtures are installed all around you without the slightest care for how that impacts everyone around them. I try to keep things light on this channel, as you know, but light pollution and fighting against it is something I feel very strongly about and I want to do as much as I can while I'm here. I'm not trying to lecture you or bring you down, I just know that a lot of you understand what's actually at stake here. If you're with me on this one, let's take a look at the current situation, shall we? The International Dark Sky Association, the IDA, reports that light pollution is growing at two times the rate of population growth. That means that over 80% of the global population lives under a light polluted sky. Our night sky is disappearing. There are fewer and fewer dark places to go to actually look up and see a sky full of stars and it keeps getting worse. How does that make you feel? It makes me both sad and angry. It's frustrating to know that the average person doesn't even consider the idea of preserving the night sky from the beaming glare of artificial light. I'm not just getting complainy because I'm an astrophotographer that wants to take better pictures. Light pollution is bad for human health and the natural rhythm of our bodies and actual sleeping patterns. It's bad for animals and wildlife. It disrupts delicate ecosystems of these animals that were never meant to exist in perpetual daylight. So here are some of the most common forms of light pollution, poor artificial lighting choices that you'll see all around you. The first example is called light glare. This is where the light fixture is not properly shielded or pointing downwards. It spews off in all directions, including into your eyes and straight up into the sky. You'll see these types of lights everywhere from residential neighborhoods to schools to commercial buildings. This type of light shines in all directions, giving users of the space a false sense of security from crime. When in reality, the blinding light actually makes it harder to see as our eyes struggle to adapt to the blinding light. Light glare never ends at the boundaries of the owner's property either. It continues to spill out over anything and everything around it, including your backyard, your bedroom window. You didn't like sleeping in the dark anyway, did you? Next up is wasted uplighting, and this is the ultimate example of lack of light pollution awareness. This is when the light source is intentionally pointed up towards the sky because it's just so darn pretty. I'm getting worked up about this, can you tell? You'll see this on residential properties as the homeowner wants to highlight the pretty tree on their lawn by shining a spotlight straight up at it. The irony is the tree and the potential inhabitants in it do not want the attention of your spotlight on it all night long. This form of lighting not only pollutes the sky, but it's a complete waste of energy for the sake of looking pretty. But it doesn't look pretty. It looks offensive to anyone that values a dark night sky. Again, I'm not trying to make you feel bad here. There's people that just legitimately don't even think about light pollution, and I want you to start. When I think back to all the poor lighting decisions I made throughout my life before I got into a strong and astrophotography, I shake my head. Again, it's a problem with awareness. The next form of light pollution is on many residential properties and commercial buildings, you'll see just straight up too much light. I understand the value of lighting for security and safety purposes, but it should be done effectively with visibility in mind. This means pointing the light downward where it's needed and not everywhere and in all directions. Shielded motion sensor lights, timers, and light dimmers are great options. The color temperature and intensity of today's lights are also a real issue. Gone are the days of those warm, orange, high pressure sodium lamps that were less harmful to ecosystems and wildlife. Now, bright white White LED lights glow at intensities brighter than daylight. Yes, you heard that correctly. These are the type of lights that are almost painful to look at and trick our bodies into thinking that we live in eternal daylight. They erase all of the stars in the night sky, but who cares about that anyway? A potential solution is to use lower light intensity levels and warmer color temperatures when possible. And again, motion sensors and timers so those lights aren't blasting all night long. They're only on when you need them. 
Lastly, we have digital billboards and signage. And I think this is gonna be the one that you'll have the hardest sell trying to get things to change as businesses fight for your attention. Some of the digital billboards that have been installed in my city over the last five years are so bright that I am baffled that they're even legal. If you've made the mistake at glancing over at one of these bright billboards while you're driving at night, good luck seeing the road in front of you after that because you've essentially just stared at the high beams of a transport truck point blank. I think everyone can agree that these ones are brutal. Yes, I am an astrophotographer who is directly impacted by the negative effects of light pollution and we're being robbed of the night sky, but I don't expect everyone to care as much or to get as worked up as I do. But if you value nature, wildlife, insects, plants, your overall human health, then light pollution is affecting you too. I'm not saying we have to turn off all the lights at night. I'm saying we need to use them responsibly. Unlike other forms of pollution, light pollution is completely reversible with solutions that are easy to implement. With the flip of a switch, I guess you could say. By making sure that outdoor lighting is useful, targeted, shielded, and controlled, we can deliver immediate lasting results. We can bring back the day-night rhythm that's encoded into our DNA along with plants and animals. We can share the night sky with a future generation of scientists, researchers, astronauts, and astronomers. So please talk to your friends and family about light pollution and how we can do better. I think the night sky is worth protecting and I know we can make a lasting difference. For more information of how you can get involved, check out the International Dark Sky Association, the IDA, and the many resources they have available. Thank you guys so much for listening to this semi-rant. I hope you can make a small difference in your community. And until next time, clear skies.